Marie Kondo challenge, a trend that took the internet by storm. Please welcome Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo. But this is the real Marie Kondo challenge. You pile up all the items in your room and throw most of them away, but you keep the ones that spark joy. However, it's a lot of work. And if that wasn't bad enough, Marie says we have to do the whole thing in one freaking day. But why make it harder on me, Marie? I'll tell you what. Ah. When we change our room so drastically in one day, you'll feel an intense emotional difference that you'll never want to go back. You're freaking me out, Marie. However, that did sound awesome. But does this have any merit to it? According to my mother, it does. But I never listen to her, so I'm assuming you won't either. Instead, I'm gonna use science to convey how effective this is. And on top of that, I decided to be stupid and up the ante. If I don't do this in 24 hours, I'm gonna destroy my asshole. And if I do do this in 24 hours, I'm gonna destroy his asshole. What? Yeah, I need to explain that. This is the Pocky Chip. <laughs> Loser eats it, and if it burns going in, it burns coming out. Let's begin. Marie recommends cleaning in order of category and not location. So it's not, hey, I'm going to start with my closet, then the bathroom, and finally my room. It's, hey, I'm going to start with clothes, and then the books, and finally, embarrassing stuff that I don't want you to know I own. The first category is clothes, so first, gather all my clothes, and then I'm going to make piles. Everything was going to piles of either things I want to keep, Things I want to throw away, or limbo. Meaning, things I don't know what I'm going to do with just yet. Or at least, that's what God says it is. Okay, off to sorting. I'm not going to lie, this part sucked. But here's an interesting philosophical concept that helped me get through this. Everything we see, touch, and encounter are all part of our life's experience from the roads we take to the people we meet. Therefore, my room is part of my life's experience. So the question here is, am I really organizing my room? Or am I organizing my experience? And the answer is, there's no difference at all. My room is my experience. Done, finally, damn. Anyways, this is the pile that we need to get rid of. But Marie says that before we throw anything away, we should express gratitude and appreciation for the item. You know, that thing that we never do for our families? Let's do that for these items we'll never see again. Thank you so much for all you've done. Ah. This is the pile we're gonna put aside for later. But for the foot soldiers that remain, Marie has special instructions for them. Folding! Yeah, anticlimactic. But the thing here is, you have to fold them in a way where the clothes can stand on their own. Which is cool and all, but I'm over here wondering why we don't just hang because them. Because you actually get more room doing it this way. I do? And by the end of it, the clothes are easier to manage. They are. Oh, now it's my turn. Been here for fucking hours. I don't wanna do this. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, things are gone. But remember what I said earlier? Cleaning my room is one thing, but I have to make sure it stays clean. And damn, do I have a good method to teach you how to do that. But in order to pass on this information, you need to understand the amazing psychology of priming. If you prime yourself, you set yourself up. They've done studies where they go to people and they have a man walk up to you and say, could you hold this for me, hand you a cup of coffee? It's an actor. And then he takes it, takes them out of his pocket, then he takes it back and says, thank you. 100 people, they do it with iced coffee. 100 people do it with hot coffee. 45 minutes later, another actor comes by and says, listen, we're doing this little test for $5. Would you read this three paragraphs and answer three questions? Most people say yes. It's a little story. The questions are about the character. What's the character like? 80% of the people that got iced coffee say the person is cold and mean. Wow. 81% of the people that got hot coffee say the person is warm and gentle or nice. That's how much we can be primed by our environment. If we don't take control of our environment, it takes control of us. Variations of that study have been replicated multiple times. And one of those studies was specific to keeping your room clean. Psychologists explored the effects of smelling the aroma of an all-purpose cleaner. Participants exposed to the smell kept their direct environment cleaner. And awareness checks in the studies showed that participants had no idea they were even being affected. If you asked them why they did it, they wouldn't say, oh, it's because the neural circuitry in my brain. No, they'll just tell I don't know, man. I just felt like doing it. That's what I want. I want to clean because I want to, not because I feel like I have to. And if I could prime myself to do that every single day, I'd want that too. And it's all possible here in my room. I'm in my room almost every single day of the year for hours on end, constantly being primed by things, whether I want to be or not. And if it's going to prime me every single day of my life, 
wouldn't it be a good idea to make it the best I could possibly make it? Oh, I just motivated myself. Okay, hear me out. I have this weird thing with books. Not that weird. I just collect them, so I'm gonna skip this one because I'm not throwing away my collection. Papers! Boy, am I not happy to start this one. You know, the funny thing is that as a Mexican, I didn't think I had paper. But as you can see, there's a lot laying around because, I don't know, I guess I thought they might be important one day. But how important can they be if I just have these papers scattered around everywhere and my life doesn't seem to be affected? Okay, I will admit it, I'm a little scared that I'm gonna throw away something important and then, I don't know, maybe the government will come after me? I know, stupid. But check this out, that subtle underlying emotion that I was experiencing led to all these papers manifesting in my room because I didn't want to deal with them. Well, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Now, let's see here. Reply by April or you die. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore that. Trash, trash. Okay, I mean, I'm almost done with the papers. For now, it's night. I'm going to sleep and you can't stop me. I just woke up and I don't know what I was thinking, but I forgot that time still passed by when you went to sleep. I have like four hours left. I'm pretty sure I'm screwed. But I'm gonna complete this regardless because I'm in too deep. Okay, the fourth step and arguably the longest step, Komono, which in Marie's mysterious cryptic language means miscellaneous items. Oh my Lord, is there a lot of Komono here? I'm stressed out. Uh, I'm losing my hair. No, I'm just kidding. I'm starting to see the point of this whole f***ing challenge. It's like this, I only have a couple of minutes left. I need the help of a friend because one of the items I'm getting rid of is this entire couch that all this stuff is on. So this took way more time than I thought it was going to take. Uh, I need a montage. sure I screwed up. Timer's almost done. I almost did it. But this couch has to go. And the challenge isn't complete unless I get rid of everything. Are you still gonna make me eat the chip? Yes. There is one thing that I am having trouble with. After going through each pile, every single time I ran across an item that was really difficult to get rid of. So I put them to the side for later because, I mean, I'm human at the end of the day, man. And I have a lot of items that belong to people I, I cared for. And throwing those items away, it's like throwing away the last memories I have of those people. You know what? That was all part of Marie's plan. Marie says, this is the reason the KonMari challenge takes a particular order. It's hard to throw stuff away, and some stuff is harder than others. So we have to work our way from less important items to more important items until eventually we can get to the sentimental items, which is the fifth step. But, ah, that's just so scary to think about. What does that have to do with anything? You should take this more seriously. You're right. Okay, that part was really hard. I have items from people I've lost in my life. And I have items from things that just remind me of amazing times. Whatever the reason, some of these items are really hard to part with. As humans, we have an irrational fear of change, which is weird because we're ever-changing creatures. Muhammad Ali said it best, a man who views the world the same at 50 as he did at 20 has wasted 30 years of his life. Doing this whole process acts as a great exercise for change. Plus, if I can be honest with myself, I probably don't like these items as much as I think I do. Otherwise, why would I put them in places I rarely ever revisit? Before we 
continue, my last video only got 40 likes. If we can at least get this one of 41, you're gonna make me one happy motherfucker. Thank you. Hey, everybody, shut the hey. fuck up. I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm already crying. It's not cooling down. Everybody on YouTube, I'm gonna teach you a trick to make everything worse. This is the roof of your mouth. You gotta get your tongue and like press it. Ah!